<laughs> right, buying kites. Um, Where's Anna? She needs to listen to this. She's not even we're filming it so other people can see it. <laughs> um, yeah, basically we're going to do a quick chat about just what to look out for and what to avoid when you're buying kites. Uh, this presentation was done by a guy called Jack Wilson, if anyone knows, you, knows him. What a legend. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, kite and board brands. There's like, everyone, a lot of people are like, um, oh, this brand's better than this. And the people, like, especially North Kites, like a few of us use them. My, most of my kites were North. Jay used to have North Kites as well. Um, they tend to be a lot more expensive secondhand because some people think they're better. But in reality, like when it comes down to it, like a kite is a kite pretty much, unless it's really old and shit. Like that's just a list of kite brands there are. I mean, there's a, there's a lot out there. Um, the, fur, the ones in bold there are like some of the main ones, and that probably extends to Liquid Force, Slingshot as well. Um, basically, so there's a lot of brands out there, but <clears throat> you want to avoid some of the really sort of dodgy ones. There's some brands which are basically a guy making kites in his shed. But um, yeah, so there's different styles of kite. You might not have sort of caught on to this yet, but so all the, all the kites we use for bucks, they're all, uh, well, I'll show you in a second, different type of kite, but they're all sort of designed around being safer, more depower, um, a bit more controllable. But then obviously if you're doing sort of hardcore freestyle and hook tricks and kite loops and stuff, then that's not what you want in a kite. So this is like the most extreme style of kite, which is a C kite. Um, oh, I've got a laser pointer here. Um, so if you're trying to work, if you see a kite in the sky, you're trying to work out what it is. Basically, sea kites have got really square tips like that, so they're just cut off on the end and they're really curved. Uh, and basically, the idea the, the a sea kite is good for kite loops. Um, it loops sort of really smoothly and gives you loads of power when you're looping. They're really good unhooked. Um, they don't like stall or anything out of the sky. But the problem with them is they're unstable. They're really narrow in range, so you need lots more of them. Like people with a full quiver of sea kites will have like five kites. Um, and yeah, hardly any D-power, and they're really hard to relaunch. So the main ones are those around at the moment, the Hadley Pro, although that's kind of disappeared because the Flex Fuel aren't doing them anymore. Uh, Slingshot Fuel and Ozone C4. Uh, hybrid C, so this is what a lot of us have got. I've got hybrid Cs, Jay has. Uh, and then basically they're, they're like a C kite, but then they're a little bit less extreme. So. Um, you see they've got slightly less square tips and they're not quite as sort of curved like that. And they normally have a bridle on the front. Um, and they're good because you get the sort of benefits of a sea kite without it trying to kill you the whole time. Um, so they're, good, they're still really good unhooked and for loops and stuff, but they've got more D-power. Um, so bow kite, this is what we use for teaching. So these are the ones that have got a lot of D-power. Um, they're basically they're good for beginners or people who just want to go out and ride in most winds and do big floaty jumps and stuff. And they're normally obvious because they've got these bridles along the front edge, all these little lines, which the other types don't really have. Um, so, yeah, most of the kites we teach on are, are bow kites. So if you're sort of just getting into it, just sort of starting to board start, this is probably the type of kite you want to look at. Um, and, yeah, so Best Waru, we've got a few of those in the society. Already Obsession, North Rebel, which is what I used to have. Cabrina Switchblade, which is more of a hybrid C actually, but um, so yeah, big lots of deep power, a lot easier to relaunch as well. Um, they just sort of sit on the edge of the window, and you just have to steer it off. Um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and then there's also Delta, which is a mix between bow and C, but yeah, best Kahuna. They're really good kites. We got a couple of those in society as well. They're really good for like big floaty jumps and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's not so important. Uh, right, so when you're looking out, when you're looking to buy kites, basically, I don't, there's hard, unless you find a really, really good deal, you never really need to buy a new kite, uh, unless you've got lots of money. Um, they are just really expensive, brand new, and it's just not worth paying it. Um, so don't buy kites older than three years, because they just, whatever, however they've been used, then the material will just be worn and they probably won't last very long. Um, and yeah, before 2006, they basically had no safety systems and they are just horrendous, so don't even think about that. You see a lot of kites popping up on eBay that someone's found in their shed, and it's like a 12 meter kite for 50 pounds or something. You'd be like, oh, that's a great deal, but then you buy it, and it's just like, it's just, it will try and kill you very much. Um, yeah, if you're looking at buying kites, make sure you get photos of it. Look out for any repairs and stuff. I'll go on to that in a sec. 
Um, don't, yeah, don't buy kites from schools. Schools absolutely destroy their kites and um, they get left on the beach a lot, which is a massive issue for kites because the trailing edge just flaps the whole time. Like Rose has just had this with her kite. Yeah, the rest of the kite is in pretty good condition, but the trailing edge, because it's been flapping so much, just the material just weakens and, you, and it just splits. Uh, avoid kites with repairs. That's really, really important. Like, small repairs are fine, but big repairs, uh, are really bad. They, they just completely change the profile of the kite and they add like weak spots and stuff. Um, and I'll show you what happened to my kites that I bought with repairs in it. So, um, yeah, the good people to look out for to buy kites from are like middle aged free riders. These people who've got more money, they don't kite very often, and they tend to, a lot of these guys just buy new kites every year. Um, yeah, that's not relevant. Like, some people none of you probably know. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, also getting spares. Um, some companies are really like prolific in the UK and you can get spares from everywhere. I, last weekend I broke my bar and I still can't find the spare part for anywhere. Uh, just because there's not much of a, they don't, they're not in the UK that much. Um, and yeah, like if, you, if you're not entirely sure and you see a deal that you want to buy, just whack up on the forum and, then, and people will just give you like pretty quick um, uh, info if, it's, if they think it's good or not. Um, so yeah, this is the cut my kite. That was the second time I ever flew it. Um, and that I bought, I think it was actually from a school without realising it. And it had a couple of repairs in it and it literally just split in half um, the second time I ever used it. I then got that repaired by Pete from Kite Mare who literally replaced the kite with like new material. And then that happened. The other side split in half as well. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, and then also this one had a couple of big repairs in it and again I used it three or four times and it just split in half pretty much. So that's the problem with lots of repairs. Um, where and when to look. So Facebook, that's like in the last couple of years there's two groups on Facebook which are these two, Kite Bay and UK Kite 7. Um, they're really good, they've got like at least like a thousand members on it and there's new kites being posted every couple of hours and so. And that's where you can. There are some really good deals popping up on there. That's where I got mine recently. Uh, kite border forum, kite forum, kite crowd. Uh, kite crowd's really good for the UK. Kite border is a little bit more European, um, but they're they're all pretty good. Uh, Blast forum. We haven't really been using Blast much this year. They used to be uh, one of our main sponsors and do all teaching and stuff. But still, there's got some quite good deals on there. Uh, yeah, blast. And then, yeah, if you, if you have a local shop, you can normally go and just try some kites. They always have demo kites, and you can say, oh, I'm interested in this kite, and they'll let you take it out for a couple of hours, uh, which is really useful if you haven't used a lot of different kites. Um, yeah, a lot of these companies, they've got on the websites, they've got, like, used kite sections where you can get some good deals, especially with boards. Uh, eBay, eBay you have to be careful with because, as I said, like, people put, like, really shitty... Uh, sort of old kites on there and there's not that much information. So. Um, yeah, so the new kites come out in the third quarter of the year. So, and when that happens, loads of people sell their like year old kites and get the new ones. And that's a really good time to, to buy them because the price drops right down. Um, so yeah, 2015 kites came out sort of in the middle of summer. Um, and yeah, loads of people sell them off to buy new ones. Um, this is kind of a rough guide of what you're looking at. So these are like good condition kites that are worth buying. This is kind of the sort of the, the price guide. So 12 metre kite, uh, brand new that is, will be about a grand. Um, and then as you go down in metres, they tend to drop a sort of 100 or so pounds off. And then bars. Bars are just ridiculously expensive for no reason. They keep going up in price. Like the new North bars, like over 400 pounds. Um, in terms of sizes, it depends on your body weight, but most people, like if you're getting three kites, it'd be like 12, 9, 7. Um, if you're getting two, maybe like 10, 12, or, or 10 or 12, or 7 or 9, basically. Or if you had any marks, you just have a 10 meter, and that's good for everything. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I won't go through that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think um, if you're lighter, especially girls, um, I think Jess Summerfield had a 9 and 7, and that pretty much sorted her for, um, for most wins. And then, yeah, I think, yeah, 10 is a good size for beginners. Um, you have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, for me, I, if I, I started off with just two kites, and I had a 12 and a 7, and 
it was it was a twelve. It was a North Rebel, so it was a basically a sort of bow kite, um, and that with a lot of deep power, I could fly nine to seven in most winds. Uh, sorry, twelve and seven. Um, yeah, if, don't like if you're looking to buy kites, don't rush into it. Wait for deals to come out because uh, you get a lot of like. I nearly did it. I saw something I thought was a good deal, and I was just about to buy it. And I was like, hang on, wait for a bit. And then two weeks later, I got a set of six kites for like £1,200. So like, it is worth waiting a bit for, for good deals to come out. Um, yeah, boards is a bit harder to say. Boards are less important, I think, uh, when you're starting out. Uh, you can pay between, like, I'd even say now, £100 and, and £400. So most boards are around £400 brand new. Um, but I mean, like Flexifoil, who do the Hadley Pro, which are loads of the guys and bucks have got, have been selling those off for two hundred pounds brand new. Um, and yeah, I mean, board isn't isn't a massive thing for when you're starting out. Um, I, think, I would say the thing with boards, like one thing that's really shit about boards is the straps you have. And there are some yeah. mates that are really stra- have crap straps. So yeah, I think st- yeah, definitely. Like straps is really subjective on. Um, on whether or not the board fit. I mean, some people like literally can't kite with certain straps because they just fall out the whole time. So it's worth trying different straps and stuff if you can. And if you get a board and you hate the straps, you can just sell the straps separately and get new straps. Uh, and it doesn't make a big difference. Um, yeah, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Just keep an eye on, on the forums and stuff. Wait a bit. People often drop the price like every few days if no one's buying it. Try and pay by PayPal. Um, if you get fucked over and they don't send you the kite, or anything like that, then PayPal will uh, basically protect you. So you'll get the money back most of the time. Um, try and negotiate. People will always drop the price by 20, 30, 50 quid, if you ask. Um, try and get postage included. Yeah. Yeah, and that, I think that's really important. Um, it's really worth just trying as many kites and boards as you can. Like, just, as, like, just ask your mates on the beach, oh, can I try, try a kite for... 10 minutes like even if it's just on the beach you get a pretty good feel for um how the kite is and like it's just even just trying different shapes of kite and see like i've talked about it earlier but if you can actually feel the difference then it's really useful to know um yeah some like some people love the safety systems on some kites some people hate them like the the hadlow pro bar that a lot of flexible kite has had uh were designed for aaron hadlow one of the world champs the last few years and he's really lanky, and I can't actually reach the uh, like the end of the bar and the deep pass straps if it's all the way in. So like I wouldn't buy that because it just doesn't work for me. But some people absolutely love it. So just try as much as you can. And that's it. Any questions? George. Uh, it depends. So a lot nowadays, a lot of them are because they're five line kites. So basically four line kites, which you've got quite a few in society. Um, you can often often change the bars between them. Um, North bars don't tend to work on other kites, but most other bars are kind of interchangeable. You can also buy sort of like pigtails on the end. Yeah, you can buy little bits of string that will change it. But if you can, stick with the ones because that's what they're designed for, and it's less. Uh, okay, I'll quickly. So five lines. Um, so five line is is to do with the safety. If, you, if you've got four lines and you've just got these four here. So one, two, three, four, like a foil kite. Um, and the safety on those, basically, it's either, there's either two types. When you release, it either goes onto just the front lines. So it's kind of like just letting the bar out a bit more. So it's not a proper, they don't call it total deep power safety. Like you don't lose all the, all the, all the power in the kite. Um, and then a f- fifth line, it's got this line in the middle. Um, basically, when you pull the release, it, it goes onto just that line. So the whole kite just sort of flaps out backwards. And it's just supported by that one there which means you completely lose all the power in the kite. So they're the safest. Um, the only issue with fifth line is if you get, uh, if the kite rolls, so sometimes you crash, the kite lands in the water and then rolls over, then normally you're fucked and there's nothing you can do and you have to swim back in or get, or get someone to grab the kite and sort it out on the beach. So that's the sort of the drawback with fifth lines. But nowadays, most uh, kites are fifth line pretty much and they're like the safest. Um, yeah, any other questions? Uh, new, they're about one hundred and forty pounds, but you can get them second hand, which you may as well. For forty quid, maybe fifty. Is it? 
Um, again, harnesses you want to try. Like I bought a harness to start with that I thought was good. It's quite cheap, but it just didn't work for me. I sold it to Rosie. <laughs> She sold them, and like it just didn't support my back, and I was like kiting for an hour, and then I could barely walk after because it, it was so bad. I recommend the girls to get girls' harnesses because the guys always yeah. just ride up so much. But... What are the pros and cons of seat harnesses versus waist harnesses? Get a waist harness. <laughs> <laughs> seat basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, seat harnesses are basically designed. They actually, I think they originally just came from windsurfing because that's what there was, and people were just using it for kiting. But they're basically good for beginners because. You've got the kite above you at 12, you're just standing there a lot of the time. And with a waist harness, uh, because the kite's always above you, it pulls up and it can just come up your ribs a bit. Whereas a seat harness, it holds it down. But as soon as you're doing any sort of kiting and not just standing there with a the kite, then you want a... Uh, come in. Um, then you want a waist harness because they're just a lot more comfortable and they just pull from a better angle. They're just better, basically. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, there's hardly any, a lot of people say, no, you can't use them differently, but I've, I've windsurfed in my kite harness quite a few times. Can you use a kite harness with a windsurfing boat? It completely depends. It's norm it, the main thing is the shape of the hook, really. Um, a windsurf harness has got like a hook that's pretty much like just basically like that, uh, whereas a kite harness sort of goes in like that. So the problem with using a kite harness for windsurfing is it's quite hard to get out of the uh, harness line as well because it's sort of clips in a bit more, but apart from that there's hardly, there isn't really a lot of difference. Uh, I think windsurf harnesses have got a bit more rigidity and support and you can't move around in them as much, but it's not a big thing. Um, anything else? Cool.